Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video, but not just another video. This is the last video of the year, the last video of the decade, and I thought I would do something a little special. I'm calling it the Artist's Pep Talk. Uh, you know, this time of year, um, people are looking back on the, the past year, the past decade, and sort of taking stock of their lives, and you know, if you had a very productive and successful year or decade, then uh, that's a happy time for you, but for some of us, it's, uh, you know, looking back and feeling like you didn't achieve what you wanted to, it can bring you down. It can even get you a little depressed. And uh, I thought this would be a good time for a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time, this artist's pep talk. And as I uh, share these ten different, uh, hopefully inspiring, uh, thoughts for you, uh, I'm going to be uh, working on uh, this sample illustration from my latest project uh, coming hopefully in the year uh, ahead, uh, if not early the following year, and I'll be talking more about that later on. But let's go ahead and get on with the first one here, uh, and it is. Number one, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be amazing. Just do your best with whatever talents you have, and you will create something worthy of attention. Uh, I think we all have a sort of a perfectionist uh, tendency inside of us, many of us do, and uh, it can result in you doing your best work, but it can also um, cause you to um, maybe have too difficult of a goal to begin with, and then when you fail to reach that goal, uh, you can come down on yourself real hard and say, oh man, I suck, you know. Uh, and you, you have to maybe um, stop trying to be perfect, basically. <laughs> um, just try to be the best you can be. Uh, and uh, starting, starting out with a lofty goal of perfectionism, I think, can get you in trouble. And so I wanted to start with just telling people, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be amazing. Uh, just work with what you've got. Uh, let's move on now to number two. I've got a lot of things to get through, for, so for some of them I'm going to try to speed through them quickly. Uh, number two. Holding yourself to a high standard doesn't mean beating yourself up. Going too easy on yourself can result in complacency or laziness, but even that is preferable to tearing yourself down and crushing your own spirit. Um, so uh, there's maybe a variation on the previous one there. I think artists are sort of uniquely have a unique instinct in terms of um, what I call beating yourself up, you know, just um, f feeling bad about your own talents uh, or what you feel to be lack of talents and things not working out the way you wanted to. It seems like uh, something about artists, and what I should say for this whole video when I say artists, not necessarily just uh, painters or whatever, but creative people of all stripes, musicians, actors, uh, you know, anyone who does something creative. Uh, we do have this weird tendency to, you know, in the name of holding yourself to a high standard, sometimes you get just get too down on yourself. And I wanted to make sure that um, people gave some thought to that. Are you holding yourself to a high standard in a way that's motivating you to do better? Uh, or have you crossed beyond that to just... Um, tearing yourself down, crushing your own spirit. Uh, and uh, pay attention to that. If you are uh, indeed um, beating yourself up mentally uh, about your own work, where you want to be, uh, where you want it to be versus where you are, that kind of thing, um, go easy on yourself, right? That's what I said there. You know, going easy on yourself, of course, it can lead you to being complacent or lazy, but... Um, I, between the two extremes, I would say <laughs> going easy on yourself is preferable to just relentlessly tearing yourself down. Let's move on to uh, the next one. Number three. Artistic progress is not always steady. There are periods of improvement, periods of staying the same, and periods of slipping backwards. Don't worry. This is a natural part of of everyone's creative journey. I think especially beginning artists can be frustrated with what they perceive to be a lack of progress and uh, feel like, well, I'm not getting any better. Um, and first of all, you just need patience because uh, progress takes a while. But the, I, I also wanted to point out that progress is not always steady. You know, Like I said, sometimes 
you are not only not improving, you may see yourself slipping backwards, which uh, can be a, a little bit terrifying <laughs> to a creative person. It's like, oh my God, look at this thing that I did uh, two or three years ago. It's better than what I'm doing now, you know? Uh, and that can really be demoralizing. Uh, but the truth is, um, as I said, progress is not always steady. Uh, and that is, I would say, true for all creative people. You have these periods of really making big strides and then other periods where you feel like you've kind of hit a, a plateau. And uh, most terrifying of all, those periods where you feel like you're actually slipping backwards. But you sh that doesn't mean you should give up. Um, don't panic. Uh, keep at it and you may find uh, that you will get back to one of those more productive uh, periods. I guess I could say quickly uh, a word or two about this project, although I think really there's another point later on where it's more suitable. But uh, this is a graphic novel project that I've uh, been working on, and um, it is going to be at least 260 pages long, something like that. And um, that doesn't qualify as the longest uh, graphic novel story I've ever told, but it does in terms of one that is going to be colored, uh, colorized or whatever, uh, that I add a certain degree of color to. Uh, it's not, well, I guess, what you would call full color, but um, certainly it's not black and white. And that has made it a more uh, time-consuming process than almost any other project that I've created page for page. And there will be more to say about uh, this project a little bit later on. But let's move on now to number four. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. Sometimes you need to get away from your own work so that you can come back to it with fresh eyes. Um, I find periodically I need to get away from it. Uh, some, there is such a thing as burnout when you uh, are relentlessly chasing some sort of goal and uh, you maybe have set a pattern for yourself of I've got to keep at it every day, I've got to meet this goal or whatever, and you uh, can get burned out. You can just find like, oh, this is, I'm not even enjoying this anymore, you know, I'm, I'm starting to hate my own work or whatever. And uh, so, yeah, remember, sometimes you need a break. There's no harm in taking a little break, um, by which I mean, you know, take a few days off, take a week off away from your project, maybe even a month. Uh, don't give up altogether. Uh, take a little breather, do something else. And you can come back with renewed energy and, most importantly, fresh eyes. You see things in a new way after you've had a little bit of a break. Uh, see, um, of course, you might see some problems that you didn't see before, but you'll also have thought of some uh, solutions or, you know, you'll, you'll identify what needs to be done uh, in a way that was impossible when you were just coming back at it day after day. So no need to feel guilty about uh, taking a little break every once in a while, or even more frequently <laughs> than every once in a while. Um, let's move on to the next one, number five. We're already halfway through. Uh, don't let anyone make you feel that you are untalented or that you are not a real artist. Uh, your creations have value, and if you keep going and put them out into the world, you will find that they change people's lives for the better. Um, there is the aspect of beating yourself up. Sometimes there is the aspect of someone else who's doing that for you. Uh, someone who has made critical remarks, especially these days uh, on the internet. It seems like everyone is able to, you know, once you put your work out there, everyone's able to weigh in and, and um, sadly sometimes say horribly negative things. And uh, so you need to not let those people have power over you. Um, it's just their opinion, anyway. And anyone who claims that you're not a real artist, I think you're arguing a silly argument, because um, I don't think that you can define what is a real artist. Like, some artists are real and some aren't. That doesn't even seem <laughs> like a worthy uh, debate. It's going to be a matter of opinion, um, and I feel like anyone who uh, creates art of any kind is a real artist, in my opinion. Uh, basically, yeah, don't let the criticism get in the way of you pressing on and with your project. Uh, you may be uh, encountering people who just don't get it. They, don't, they are not in a position to understand what it is you're trying to do. 
uh, and in that sense their opinion uh, is off base. And you, you keep at it and get your work out there and you will find the people who do get, do get it. They do understand what you're attempting to do. And uh, there's nothing more wonderful than finding those people and, and uh, realizing that you've made that connection, that your work has connected with them and uh, made a difference in their lives. I think I should actually um, uh, bring out my white gouache. So give me a second, I'm going to start adding a little bit of white gouache uh, highlights to this illustration. All right, I'm back. I'm back with my beloved white gouache. Gouache! Oh, you have to do that. <laughs> and, uh, some things never change, even after a decade. Uh, number six here. Sometimes a project that you started with great enthusiasm will just fizzle out. It may be that you've simply lost interest in it. This happens to every creative person. Move on and try something new. Keep starting things until you find the project that sticks. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to get something in here about the frustration of finding that you start things but don't finish them. And you may begin to feel, is that the way it's always going to be for me? Am I, am I, am I never going to be able to finish anything? Um, and my feeling is sometimes that's the project telling you that uh, you don't have sufficient interest in it to carry it through to the end. And the, uh, and the only solution in that case may be to start uh, some entirely different project. Um, that whole thing is a little bit of a, yeah, and you can come back to it, right? It's, it's just tricky to determine, is it worth sticking with this thing? Or do I just have to sort of listen to what <laughs> the project is telling me that's kind of trying to tell, tell you, you know, you thought this was going to be a lot of fun or that you were going to be excited about this, but it turns out that no, this is maybe not inherently interesting enough for you to give you that energy that you need to complete the project. Uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I've got a lot of abandoned projects, um, uh, that uh, things that I started and stopped. Usually, you know, artists, we have a way of starting something with great enthusiasm. This is going to be the best thing I've ever done, you know. And you tend to have that level of enthusiasm, and then it can be disappointing when you find that, you know, a few weeks later, it's just like, boy, this is, I'm not into this anymore. Or, um, and that in itself can be sort of demoralizing and make you... A, doubt yourself as an artist, especially if you have this image that, that that everyone else seems to be leaping all the way to the end of their project in a single bound, you know, and it's like, there's something wrong with me, how come I have, you know, how come I keep having my projects fizzle out and having me uh, never finish the thing that I started? Well, you're not alone. I think every, every artist, uh, every creative person has a pile of such projects Abandoned for the time being, let's call them, because sometimes you can come back to it, you know, and then find that you you figured out the way of doing it now, and, and that's giving you the energy to finish it. Anyway, never fear if you're one of those people who started ten different projects and never finished any of them. Just go on to the eleventh one, you know. One of these days you're going to find the one that really clicks. Number seven. If I can grab hold of it properly. <laughs> Uh, looking at the work of other artists, especially those who you regard as better than you, can be demoralizing. Don't just sit there envying them and feeling that you'll never be that good. Uh, get inspired by them. Study their work. Copy it. Learn some of their tricks. Let other artists' work be a source of energy that helps you lift your own work to the next level. Um, People have heard me talk about this before. I think it's a perennial um, problem with artists, comparing yourself to other artists and have, having that very act of comparing uh, bring you down and feel like I'm no good compared to this other person. And I've talked about this in other videos, about the, some people's tendency to view the creative endeavors as, as if it were some kind of competition. Um, you know, I need to beat this other person. You know, I've, sometimes I've seen people saying, Mark, I've, I'm learning from your videos. One day I will surpass you, you know. And to me, I'm sort of like, well, wait a minute. What is this? <laughs> it's a race to a finish line of some kind? No, it's, you don't need to beat anyone out. Someone doing a good job is not beating you uh, and taking away from you uh, by doing something well. Uh, as I said, let their work inspire you. 
Um, and I certainly have gained a lot of inspiration from other artists over the years. And as I said, you know, specifically, if you like their way of doing things, study it, copy it, um, learn from them. You know, when I say copy it, I don't mean plagiarize it and put it out into the world pretending that it's yours. No, this is something you're just doing in your spare time. Learn from them by doing copies, and that can help you to unlock some of the tricks of the trade, and then you can apply those tricks to your own work. That's not plagiarism. That's you've just picked up um, a technique from somebody else. Like even this right now, what I'm doing, you see me applying white paint to uh, a sort of beige colored, uh, brownish colored piece of paper. That's a t uh, that's not copyrighted, folks. <laughs> Have at it. You know, you this this can inspire you rather than, you know, um, getting down about like, oh man, I. My drawings don't look like that or whatever. Not that this one looks that great. I shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't pat myself on the back. But in the case of other people's art, maybe they, you find yourself envying uh, what you see them doing. Don't let that envy uh, be the end of the process for you. Let their work be a kind of a teacher for you. Uh, I've learned so much from other artists over the years. Let's move on now to number eight. Other artists may look like they're having an amazing life, but don't be fooled. Everyone's going through private struggles, and many people, quite understandably, choose only to share their successes with the world. This one, uh, I think, relates a lot with the sort of internet and uh, Instagram and all these people um, showing all the amazing stuff that has happened. In fact, uh, I myself am probably guilty of um, mainly uh, <laughs> conveying the good things and uh, leaving out some of the bad things. And that's where I wanted to talk a little honestly about uh, this project that I've been working on for more than a year now. Uh, it has not been easy. I've, I've sort of struggled with this project. I, I've had ups and downs. Um, I felt unsure in a way that I haven't with uh, previous projects. Uh, the editor found that there was a room for improvement with a lot of scenes. I had to make a lot of changes. Um, and I've just been working on this one project way past what should have been the deadline, technically. You know what I mean? And that in itself can be a little uh, demoralizing. Uh, you're sort of like, what's wrong? Why is it not coming easily? the way it has in the past. So I just wanted to sort of share that with you, that I have gone through a, a tricky year. I don't have a whole lot to show for this past year. Um, I'll even quickly mention that I created an entire How to Draw book that has not yet been published, and I kind of wonder if it ever will be published. Uh, and that is demoralizing, to think of, to have done that much work uh, and have it sort of in limbo, because this um, publisher that I worked with, uh, Impact, some of you know, the Mastering Manga books published by Impact, that publisher went out of business. And unfortunately, one of my books got caught in that process. It is complete. The right to have it published has been transferred to a new publisher. But I don't know if they are obligated <laughs> to publish it. it. It may be up to them, and they may choose not to have it see print. I, I'm, uh, I should look into that and see if I, before I start talking about it as if I know. But that that's among the challenges that I have faced this year, and I just wanted to sort of share that with you. Instead of sort of acting as if everything is always hunky-dory, let, let you know that, yeah, we all have ups and downs, and um, don't let the appearance of success that you see with other artists on the internet make you think that you're the only one who has struggles. That is certainly not the case. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I think a lot of people are choosing not to talk about the bad times for, you know, understandable reasons. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. Number nine. Art in its purest form is not about being popular, making a lot of money, or winning awards. It's about the pleasure of making something, something that no one else but you could have created. I think we can get uh, entranced by the idea of pop being popular, uh, and uh, certainly once you do something uh, professionally, uh, measuring your success by way of money or awards or something like that, 
and I wanted to make sure that I got in here at least one sort of cautionary note about that, you know, that when you're, when you're really thinking of art in a pure way, you should not be equating its value with something like popularity, certainly not internet popularity, and the number of likes, or the number of shares, or indeed uh, subscribers, or whatever, all these little um, measurements that we have these days, that doesn't define uh, the, the value of your art. Um, and don't let, don't let it bog you down if you're, the stuff that you're creating is not being seen by very many people. That's not what it's about, really. Um, it really should, in its purest form, it's really just about you creating something, and, and that in and of itself is a wonderful thing, the, the pleasure of creating something that has never been created before. And almost by definition, it is something that is n unlike what anyone else would do, given that same idea. You've, you know, without even trying to, you've done it in your own way. You've put your stamp on it, and there is a great pleasure in that uh, on its own, whether it's seen by lots of people or not. And now we come down to the final one, and like any good pep talk, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the final end of my pep talk uh, was properly inspirational. Hopefully this will help some of you out there. Number 10. Make that thing. Draw that picture you've been wanting to draw. Write that story. Sing that song. Try that crazy idea you've always wanted to try. Get it done. Put it out there and share it with the world. It may start out bad, but you'll make it better. And then you'll make it great. Because you're an artist. And that's what artists do. Uh, so there's my final uh, bit of uh, hopefully inspirational uh, thinking there for you. Especially those of you who've had a rough year. Uh, or, heaven forbid, a rough decade in which things just didn't work out the way you wanted them to, um, hopefully my pep talk will uh, help you to get a little re-energized and keep believing in yourself. Don't let the world bog you down. Uh, your ideas do have value, and that thing that you've been wanting to make uh, needs to be made, and you are the one to make it. So thank you so much. I suppose I will quickly say thank you one last time as we reach the end of the decade. One last thank you to those of you who have chosen to support me by getting any of my books like Mastering Manga, uh, The Realism Challenge, and finally, The Two Pencil Method with my little Corgi Joy right there on the cover. Oh, I did have, I, I feel like I knocked the tripod severely out of whack <laughs> with that last part of the video. But we are now finally at the end of this pep talk. I want to thank you all, not just for watching this video, but for having subscribed, uh, having watched uh, any of my videos, having, you know, given me support in, in your kind words uh, over the years, whether it's in the responses uh, in the comment section of uh, here on YouTube or uh, following me on Twitter and uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff really means a lot to me, and you guys have really made my uh, decade uh, much, much more uh, pleasant than it otherwise would have been, and I am in debt to you guys, really, for inspiring me in your own way. You have given me the pep talk that I have needed at various times, but let's go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.